Good morning, everybody. Today we want to talk about benzodiazepines. Sorry there's no Alvis today, but I'm on my way downtown for a eye appointment, um, so I can't bring him with. So anyways, um, what are benzodiazepines? It's a type of medication that's used in psychiatry, often for sleep issues, anxiety, PTSD, um, you know, other trauma, and it's very effective. Like, it's one of the most powerful medications that exists in the field of psychiatry. However, it has tons of negative effects on your brain long term and your body and can cause all sorts of like other issues. It can cause sleep issues and other side effects that I don't even have time to fully talk about. So the other thing is if you just willy-nilly stop taking benzodiazepines, you can literally die. It is that strong of a medication. You can get heart issues and brain issues and you can have um, just like insomnia for days and not sleeping for days and weeks on end can actually kill you um, because you need sleep that badly when it gets to that point. Kind of like constipation, a little bit's not gonna hurt you but if you are not pooping for a week or more or even five days, that can be a medical emergency. So in the same way, getting off of benzodiazepines can be extremely difficult. Some people are on them their entire lives and that's fine for them. Other people are asking me how to help wean themselves off because they've done their research and they know that it's not ideal to be on those things for a long time. A lot of people get put on them after a stressful point in their life, after trauma, after anxiety, depression, after PTSD. Um, So oftentimes it's many doctors go to first drug of choice and that's probably not the best sort of first choice drug that you would want to be put on because benzodiazepines are so horrible to get off of. Um, I've had friends be hospitalized multiple times inpatient or outpatient um, or straight like straight up hospitalization trying to get off of them or because some practitioners told them just to stop them cold turkey. Bad idea don't do that. Do not stop them cold turkey. Do not stop them without the help of a doctor who is actively talking to you on a regular basis or there for you to support you going through the withdrawal process because it can be worse than alcohol, worse than cocaine, worse than sugar, worse than any other detox you've probably ever gone through in your life. It can be deadlier than all of those things combined. Um, maybe not combined, but it can definitely be worse than all those things. So Dr. Kelly Brogan talks about Um, some of this in her books and her programs. Dr. Peter Bregan, B-R-E-G-G-I-N, has a really good book on the pandemic right now, but he also talks about how to wean off of psychiatric medications. Um, There are some institutes, very few, one of them just closed down, that talk about IV therapy and high-dose vitamin therapy and herbal therapy in terms of helping you wean off of these, but you really need a doctor's help. So you need a functional medicine doctor who specializes in psychiatry. So ifm.org, look for psych specialties, maybe an NET practitioner or a therapist or a combo or an acupuncturist the more people you can have on your team to help you through that process the better but you really need someone who can taper the medication very slowly to wean off this applies for pretty much all psych meds but especially for benzodiazepines it's critically important to use someone's help and to give you enough yourself enough space to feel negative emotions to feel whatever is going to come up to truly heal to deal with the deep root cause issue and only you and you know your personal self can really tell you what that's like and who what the root cause is and that probably is between you and a therapist or psychiatrist that you trust deeply and that can take time but once you have someone you trust deeply who's willing to help you get off of that great but if your doctor is saying you're never going to get off of it then your question should be where's another doctor who will help me do this Um, and run away I mean, if your life is in a horrible state and you're in like an abusive, toxic relationship and your job stinks, maybe you need to work on some of the lifestyle factors first, right? It's kind of like trying to, um, it's like trying to build a car without any parts. Like you need to make sure the foundations are there first or you're trying to, you know, build a car without the wheels. You need the foundation, you need the platform, you need the structure first before you go and start adding all the fancy seat warmers and cool things and, you know, Apple CarPlay and stuff to your car, you need the structure first. You need your life to generally be in order before you start weaning off of any type of psychiatric medication. That's my main thing that I tell patients is like, do it with a doctor who's willing to help you, who's willing to be there for you and counsel you through the process. Make sure you have someone who's a talk therapist or, you know, some type of emotional or support. And if you have a holistic practitioner, 
like myself or like an NET or an acupuncturist or a functional medicine doctor who can also support you with some of the symptoms you're getting while going through that tapering off process, that's critically important. But also if you're in that realm, I would definitely investigate Kelly Brogan, B-R-O-G-A-N, and Dr. Peter Bregan for more resources, more info. They have free, Peter Bregan used to have some free videos on this on YouTube, I think he still does. And he's an old guy who's just clearly has a good heart and really cares and wants to help a lot of people. Um, so I think that would help a lot of you. If you can share this with people you know on psych meds who are considering getting off them, just let them know that um, it's normal for shadow sides, for dark things to come up. It's normal for hard times while you're weeding off of these things. And it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to do hospitalization or inpatient programs for some of these medications because the tapering process can be that ridiculously difficult. Um, and know you're not alone. Know a lot of mental health issues do stem from early childhood issues and or trauma, either generationally or in your own life that you might not even be aware of. So it takes courage to go on medication sometimes and it takes courage to go off of medication sometimes. It's not always the best thing to just be put willy-nilly on an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety or an anti-psychotic um, or a benzodiazepine. I pray that most psychiatrists don't take these medications lightly, but a lot of GP general practitioners and psychiatrists do put people on this weird combo of multiple medicines and you know, so you don't know which one's working or not working or how they're interacting for that person. It can be a, kind of a nightmare, honestly, for some people who are on multi-meds um, as they you know, try to find a recipe that works for them. It can be a very difficult, arduous process. So I would try everything you can to address lifestyle, food, gut health, an anti-inflammatory diet and lifestyle, optimizing your sleep and your sleep habits, optimizing therapy and your thought processes, meditating, exercising, doing everything you possibly can in terms of your structure, your lifestyle, your foundation, to set a foundation of good health and habits and food and diet and water and sleep and all the things, sunlight, that you need for a healthy um, life and a healthy mental function because even if you don't think it's helping you, it's for sure going to help you. And a lot of times with anxiety and depression and PTSD, you don't realize that the exercise is helping you, but it is helping you. You don't realize that sleep is helping you, but it's for sure helping you. You don't realize good food is helping you. And it's just the slow, gradual lightening of the burden that makes all the difference. All right. I love you all. Have a great day. Bye.